Massimo, we all recognize that race is a very uh, prevalent and sensitive issue in modern society. What can philosophers of biology bring to the debate that maybe is not apparent uh, in common discourse? Yeah, that's an excellent question. And it's, of course, a tough uh, topic. But the fact is, from a biological perspective, human races don't actually exist. They do, of course, exist as human constructs and the kind of human construct that actually has very much practical effects, as we all know, at a political level, at a social level, at a personal level. So just to say that they don't exist, the human races don't exist biologically, doesn't mean that they're not important mm -hmm. uh, in, in everyday discourse. But there is no biological essence, there is no biological thing that we can refer to as a race in the case of human beings. In biology, races have, the term race has a very specific meaning. It means that a, spe a species that has races uh, is subdivided into local populations that are genetically differentiated, some of which are in fact different enough that may be incipient species. That mm -hmm. is, there may be a process of speciation, origination of new species mm -hmm. uh, coming about. Now, in human beings, that is simply not the case. It's not the case because of the way the human population is constructed and, and because of the way in which human beings actually function as animals. We're very social. We move a lot. We, we migrate quite a bit. And basic population genetics theory will tell you that human migration is sufficient to essentially erase any major distinctions between local populations right. at a genetic level. So, so let's get our definition clear. Where is race in the biological uh, uh, universe uh, uh, existing so we can know what that standard is? Where it exists, it essentially is synonymous with subspecies. Subspecies, right. okay. So and what's an example of that, say, in the primates? Um, well, at one point, bonobo chimpanzees and chimpanzees were, were considered two subspecies. Okay. Now they're actually, uh, most, my understanding is most primatologists think of them as two different species. Okay, but that's helpful. You know, that's that, that kind that, of thing. That type of thing. Now, is the claim that by, by that definition, by your definition, is that claim a scientific claim or is it is that a philosophical claim that is interpreting um, biological data? Because some, <laughs> some, I think, would claim the latter. You, you were very definitive in saying it does not exist as yeah. a scientist. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've heard some other people maybe say that it does exist. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's because this is, as we were saying, a, a very controversial yeah. issue at a level, yeah. at a political and social level. As a population geneticist, I feel pretty confident in saying that, no, there is no evidence of... Uh, actual subspecies or races in the human in the human species and this is not just a, um, a result of the fact that basic population theory population genetic theory tells us they couldn't exist it's yeah you know, we have data uh, the overwhelming majority of genetic variation within the human species is within populations not across populations which is the pattern you expect when right. there, there are no races right. now that's sad however and this is where it becomes controversial it's not, this is not to say that there are no genetic differences between human populations. There are. There are some human populations that have, as we all know, geographical populations that have different skin colors, for instance. Yeah. Right? There are different populations, some human populations that have some genetic markers at a higher frequency or lower frequency uh, than I mean, others. And the susceptibility to disease is, uh, right. um, you know, I come from an Ashkenazi Jew. So Correct. I looked it up doing this series. I learned there were 24 different uh, ge genetic diseases that have a higher uh, frequency in the Ashkenazi Jewish population than the general population. I didn't know that. Correct. <laughs> so now I know. So now those know differences that. are there. Sickle cell anemia in the African yes, American. Exactly. So those differences are there, but they are, in fact, in a sense, s skin deep, because uh, they don't. They only uh, affect a tiny fraction of the genome, and usually, they are genetic markers. These are genetic markers that are in direct response to uh, obvious characteristics in the environment. Why is it that skin color is the most obvious example yeah. of this? Well, because if you live near the equator, it is adaptive to have a darker skin. <laughs> right, if you right. live near the, yeah, you know. I, I've, had, I've had a few uh, skin cancers, and, uh, and if I live near the equator, I'd have a lot more. Right. But right. overall, your genome is not very different from that of pretty much any other human being on the planet, except for those 
small numbers of, so, of markers. So, so it's it's a it's it's not a qualitative test, it's not a step function. It's a sort of a quantitative analysis. And so, if you take what we consider different different groupings, I don't know, use the. U.S. government, not that they're the, the arbiter of what's right about science, but I, I, I think, you know, they'll, <laughs> Far from they'll, it. <laughs> yeah, they'll, have, they'll have white, they'll have black, they'll have Asian, and uh, maybe Native American, and I think uh, Oceano or something. There's a, there's a, they have various groupings. Now, w what you're saying is that there's no variation among those groups, five, just to take that number, that would rise to the level of uh, an incipient subspecies, there's none. Correct, not but, only, it gets even worse, actually. I mean, it's interesting, you, you picked, of course, a reasonable classification of, uh, you know, governmental classification yeah, I mean, of groups. But the history of human races from a biological perspective is, is particularly telling because uh, people have actually identified anywhere between a minimum of two or three and a maximum of several dozen human several species. Several dozen, wow. right. Uh -huh. And so that tells you right there right. that there really is no agreement yeah, right, right. Uh, going on. For, even when we say things like, you know, blacks, for instance. Well, blacks what? Blacks east from East Africa are yeah, very different from the ones from West Africa, right. which of course are very different from the one from Australasia. They look black simply because they all live in similar latitudes and they all have to, do, to deal right. with you well, know, the Indian subcontinent, when you, if you're in India, uh, I've never been in a population where the diversity of uh, degrees of skin color I've, I've seen yes. as, as dramatic as, as within India. And yet they're all from that same population. That's right. So the differences from a biological perspective are very superficial. Because, however, they tend sometimes they're obvious, as in the case of skin color, then we tend to pick on those and think that there's something really fundamental going on, that these people are really different at a fundamental level. But biologically speaking, they're not. That, as I said, doesn't mean that species, uh, that, that races, human races, are not a very important concept at a sociological and political level. But they are very distinct from, uh, the problem is very distinct from the problem of biological differentiation.